We will call the uh, September 28th select, Conway Select Board meeting to order. Uh, it is 6.02. And uh, so we're meeting here for the very first time in nine months. How long has it been? Uh, My first time. March. <laughs> Beginning of March. What, six months, whatever, uh, in person. And, uh, and there is a conference line people can call in. Uh, it was on our agenda. You can call in by our normal phone number. So, um, we, uh, Tom sent out the minutes of the September 14th meeting. Did everybody get a chance to look at them? They seem okay. So, I'm going to make a, a motion that we accept the uh, September 14th minutes. I'll second. Great. And all in favor? Aye. Sounded unanimous. Um, we have three vendor warrants that we need to sign before we leave tonight. Uh, and so uh, there's a vendor warrant for 437 159 There's a payroll warrant for 115 903 38 And a payroll deduction warrant for... 291438. Any issues with anything in those warrants? Otherwise, I no. will make a motion we accept them and pay them. So, all in favor? Yes. Aye. Uh, I'll take Phil's as a second because I heard him second. Good. Um, so, meetings attended by select board members. So, we usually start at down at the end first? I have not been to any meetings since okay. we last met. <laughs> so Phil? I had one Frontier Regional School Committee meeting and one Union 38 School Committee meeting and one Conway Grammar School, which was just three over two weeks, which is like a year low. That's a, that's a record. Seriously. <laughs> um, and, you know, the it got to some really interesting stuff that one of the the, the the frontier meeting in particular I was just really struck with the high level discussion that took place involving implicit bias racial bias uh, within school modern school constructs within curriculum that's been developed over decades etc and um, there's such a, a hue and cry to really address this in a systematic way and one of the things that took place is that they uh, a, grad, a frontier grad from 2010 that went on to get, um, went to the Ivy League and then got a, a PhD at NYU in intersex, got dual PhDs with education and intersexual, in intersectional justice. And it, it just sort of, uh, uh, just sort of, so, so, sort of trained to, to, to take a look at these issues from an institutional point, from a curriculum point. And, uh, we hired her as a consultant and um, and got a huge buy-in from the faculty to make real changes um, starting with the lowest hanging fruit which is a, uh, the, the displays of confederate flags um, and, and they, they are in the school well there's always been yeah and, and there was another thing that took place that um, i don't know if people saw it because it did get in the newspaper briefly and that was um, there was a fundraiser, a, a citizen fundraiser group um, out of out in, out of Deerfield, um, mostly out of uh, the, the Italian club. There, the, the the and they used the the old uh, frontier Redskins Native American imagery to do a fundraiser for the sports for declaring themselves sports boosters, etc. Et recently, and they didn't raise all that much. But um, the, the, the vote was taken to decline their money, um, which was a big deal and, and just wow. in, and just interesting. But I appreciated that that this the tone and the tenor of the conversations involved, the respectfulness, and um, it was it just so that, that that was really interesting. I thought. And the other thing that took place is you know I I'm sure no school committee since like before 1918 Spanish influenza took a vote in Conway to buy blankets, a blanket for each kid. <laughs> really? Yes, we did. And because we're doing outdoor education, there's six tents set up, I believe. Um, and they were all grateful for the town to, for authorizing those tents. Um, um, At my nephew's school, it's bring your own. 
BYOB. They're, Bring that's their own blanket. that's part of it, but every kid's going to have a, a blanket with their name in it. And great. Um, but that's that's really something when you just take a step back and think about that you needed to buy everybody blankets because they're going to be outside in the cold weather. What about hats? Yeah, you got to bring. Does yeah. everybody have a hat? Yeah, <laughs> blankets were enough. Um, wrap the blanket tight around your head, kid. We'll do a hat drive. But, wow. Um, so th there was just a, it, was, it felt like the first time that you were actually able to address address stuff in school committee meetings that didn't have like the sort of Damocles hanging over your head like for imminent doom. So it was kind of neat. I appreciated that. But that was about it. And starting up okay. Oh, so that the attendance was was uh, like a hundred percent. That it's for the families in Conway. That the grammar school it's two days on, two days at home, and then Wednesday everybody's at home, and it's a development day. Um, the the interesting thing with the buses is that the most of the days so far there's been zero kids that have from Conway Grammar School that have needed bus transportation. So that is the ongoing negotiations that we've started with Gribco, because um, we have a contract with them, but the world has changed. We have an obligation to keep them in business, um, but we have an obligation to do what's right for the town and for the taxpayers too, and if they're not spending the money that we're paying for, then we need to get that money back. And so these meetings were all done on Zoom? Meetings were all done on Zoom, uh, with no public, so the, the, the interim, until they get, they decided it makes more sense to wait for the software update from Google Meet. The, the, the school does Google Meet. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, right, right. and um, but the, they're recorded so you can send it to FCAT? They are, they are live, live broadcast through FCAT as well. Great. Um, but there's no, now uh, if a resident or a citizen wants to participate, they have to submit a question 24 hours in advance, which is just scandalous. But um, can't keep if you can't keep it safe, uh, any other chance to uh, you know without doing that. Yeah. So that's supposed to end beginning of October when security improves and we can let people back into meetings. Uh, but it, well, feels, I, it, feels, I, it feels weird because we were having school committee meetings where there was regularly 200 people plus on. Uh, on the meeting, right, and the right. public comments that lasted three and four hours long, and uh, all of a sudden you have to say no, you can't, nobody can participate. It's I only had one meeting. Conservation Commission had a meeting. Uh, there are a number of properties on the South River, sort of across from your house, by uh, Wendy Stevens' property, and then Jim Manuel's property up the roadways that are starting a. Uh, um, a Japanese knotweed eradication program, and I believe Wendy's property might have been worked on today. There were some signs up along the bridge saying, you know, that, that there was going to be some spraying. There was, everybody was, well, the but, uh, butters were notified, uh, and it was supposed to be done today, so we'll see. But the knotweed is just out of control. Okay, public comments. Uh, can I ask if there's anyone on the phone call now? Uh, I am Priscilla. Okay, thank Hi, you. Hi, Priscilla. Hi. There was no Zoom connection, correct? That's right. We're, do we're only using the phones. Trying to have a, a in-person meeting in town hall with Zoom felt like that would be confused, too, too confusing. So... So we're doing are it. Are you meeting in town hall now? Is that what you're saying? Yes. We are sitting in town hall, all of us in person, right. for the first time. And are people uh, what, welcome to be in town hall as well? Or yes. You, yes. Or not? Yes. Yes. We have we have tables that are spread out pretty far. If if you want to come on oh. down, we'll be here for another hour or 45 minutes or so. I expect. Uh huh. Or stay so, on the phone. Yeah, so I didn't know that that's how things were happening. I didn't see anything about a change, but I wasn't looking. It, it was, in the, was in, the in the agenda. It's in the agenda? Yeah. It didn't say that it was a change, though. You just, it, it, yeah, she's, she's right. right. She's she right. She just said, yeah. Yeah, she's right. No, it just says, here, make yeah. this call. If there's no Zoom connection, yeah. Yeah, it says next day. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay. So all future meetings are now, unless something changes at town hall and we can <laughs> we, just come. We will be deciding that at the end of this meeting, but <laughs> but but most oh, okay. more than likely yes, they will all be here in town hall. Okay. And can I ask another question while we're you know, sure. <laughs> doing this? It, is the um, agenda posted by a certain time or what is the it's usually yeah. posted at least by the Thursday before the meeting. Okay. All right. I did, all right. Other weeks I've checked and not seen anything, but I didn't check this week, so. So right. our meetings Thank are every you. other week, so it's every other Thursday right That's before right. the meeting. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Uh, so we have a couple pieces of old business. Oh. Go ahead. Public comments. Oh, I was just going to say, where is it posted? Oh, it, oh, there's a little bulletin board right out of the town, in front of the town office. It's a little, it's okay. got glass in front of it to, so it doesn't get rained yep. on. Yep. Is it posted online as but well? It's not posted. It be. Yeah. Do I we mean, post it online? To know I, I, I don't think it's been posted online. We have been posting it on the calendar, on the town calendar, under the meeting. Yeah. Um, there's usually the agenda. Now we, we always included the Zoom information on that too. This this week was a little bit different because we're in transition staffing here, but uh, it, it should be posted in full um, on the town calendar. Uh, but that's not the official yeah. posting. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So we have, we have uh, two pieces of old business. They will all be very familiar. One has to do with the, and, and, and one, one has to do with the Ford Stewardship Plan. And so we had a commitment that we would sign a letter of, of support. That, mm, aren't we signing? So those are two different. Go ahead. What, what is it? I thought one was signing a, a, like a, a letter of reference. Or yes. One was approving the plan and one was signing a letter of reference for the authors of the plan. <laughs> okay, so our letter of support, that's, that's this one? Yes. So, so you, you guys should be able to yeah. see this in your packet? Uh, you can sign letter of support and still vote against the plan, actually. You, you could. Uh, so this is just a letter saying that, that uh, we felt that Mary and Alex did a good job, uh, you, know, you know, leading the effort. Uh, you know, give, giving advice, education for the folks in town, and, and you know, truly trying to listen to what people really wanted. Um, so have you had a chance to look at it? Yeah, and this is just a reference, to me this is just a letter saying that, that basically they have done the work to our satisfaction that they were contracted to do. Yep, yep. So I'm comfortable signing this. So I'll make a motion that we sign this letter. So this is the letter of support, yes. Just the letter of I'll support? Second okay, all in favor? Yes. Okay, so before we leave the meeting, we should all... Okay. Do we have an official one? Why don't you sign that? That mine? Yeah. I'll pass it down. And then we also have a contract. You have to approve no land. So well, the Forest Stewardship Plan. We approved the letter that supports the people that wrote the plan. Now we now we need to do the plan. I thought we signed that last week though. No, nope, that we talked about it. No, they they went over all the changes and everybody was fine with the uh, amendments to the plan that they made. Oh, okay. So, so yeah. So this agenda item had two pieces to it. Correct. The first one is uh, to sign the plan. Correct. And the second one was letter of support. Correct. Right. So, so we've talked a lot about the plan. Does anybody have an objection to signing the plan? Well, Priscilla communicated with the select board in writing. Yep. Her objections. If is is she still on the line? I am. Okay. So do you wanna do you wanna state your objections? Yeah, for yeah, the record, I say that it, it doesn't seem to make sense to me that you would sign something that commits yourself, commits the town to something for five years, 
when you, we are also getting this other study done and we don't know what that study will say. So and it, for me, it would be a matter of principle not to sign something that commits to something for five years. You know, this says that if you so, do anything, you need to do what's in this plan. You need to do it by this plan, and I don't know why we should be required to do that. Doesn't mean we wouldn't choose to, or whatever. But why is this? Why are we signing and pigeon? You know, putting ourselves, committing ourselves to something for. I'm sorry, five years, ten years. I think it's twenty. We don't have all the information. So, Tom, do you want to talk about what happens if we don't sign? No. Uh, well, the the. Uh, well, is there is there something yet? The, the most uh, immediate thing is that we don't, we're not able to do the carbon credit study. That, that is conditioned on our having a forest stewardship plan. And, and, and any other grant that we get from the Mohawk Trail Woodlands Partnership will have the same, uh, same requirement. So, Priscilla, what, 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 what I know a little bit about this, so that, I, you know, what, what Tom just said about, um, it being required for the study. I don't know if it's required. I mean, I, I think we got we got a grant for the study regardless. But in order to participate in the carbon credit market, um, we we, uh, we will need okay. an active forest stewardship plan. And the thing about our particular situation is, if um, if say a neighboring municipality, such as for instance, like the South Deerfield Water District, that owns 980 acres of forest in Conway. Um, and has hired the same forestry outfit of Mary Widbor and Alex um, um, Barrett, Barrett um, <clears throat> and is putting together their own forest stewardship plan, which just for the sake of argument, let's just assume it looks very much like ours, um, that would facilitate cooperation with them and putting a lot more acreage into that carbon credit thing and improving the fiscal result of the carbon credit thing. So. Uh, and, but the, the, to, but just the meat, to, the, just the, talking about the actual meat and potatoes of the plan itself, I kind of looked at it a little bit different than you, Priscilla, because I looked at it as having sort of non-committal commitments, and which are I, I have to, I'm pretty fond of the non-committal commitments <laughs> myself, just in general. Um, but the the, the, the uh, you know and, and just the optionality to do that it sort of puts off any decisions that there was any disagreement with anybody in town about. And I like that whole idea of just putting off decisions that don't immediately need to be made because they aren't immediately germane and relevant to what we're talking about. So why just like stir stuff up? And um, so, you know, I looked at it, it as sort of like it was all things to all people, but it was really nothing mandatory or binding to anybody other than we sketched out possible optionality, as Mary would put it, uh, for, for lots of different things that we could decide to do in the future. Um, and I did get advanced feedback already from our partners in the carbon credit study that the forest stewardship plan as submitted um, was ideal, was they called it ideal for what we're trying to do. So I kind of took all that as saying, you know, this isn't, I, I didn't see it as obligating the town or any of us to do anything that um, that, that anybody would disagree with. And I, so that, I don't know. Did you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can. Right. And I, do, I do understand what you're saying, um, but I don't know why this should be, it should be required in order to participate in a carbon study. We have it. Doesn't mean we have to commit to it for, 10 years, right. I have to sign something that says we will. That's my, you know, that's my objection, is that why are we signing ourselves into something to say this is what we will do if we do anything for, for 10 so, years? So the, the, or we don't have all the information we're going to make decisions on. I asked that exact question. I, I tried to understand why it was required. And the, what, yeah, why is it? So because the people that actually buy the credits, and those are consortiums, et cetera, et cetera, they need that, they require that sort of additional, uh, uh, it, they look at it as sort of insurance that the community is doing what they say they're going to do and does have what they say they have. Um, and sort of, it's, it's sort of a, a, a third party's 
uh, inspection of your forests or whatever, or you know, a, a description of what you have. And right, so, but we do have a plan. We have this plan. But it's not. We, we don't have a plan unless we adopt it. Uh huh. All right. Well. So I mean, well, I, I mean, I, my question was: it, it didn't seem to me that if we were to deviate this plan, deviate from this plan in the next five to ten years, if something came up, like there, there's there's no penalty for us right. to reevaluate and right. say, okay, we've changed our mind about this particular part of the plan. All that matters is that we have a plan that the town and the select board has committed to. So that, you know, it's kind of like there's, there's no penalty for changing the plan, but the benefit for signing it and being able to participate in the carbon credit program, I think, outweighs the... Yeah. That's kind of how I read it. The, the plan does make somewhat of a commitment that we're going to form a town committee that's going to be responsible for these decisions in the future. Right. Well, and, but we have 20 and years to do that. An yeah. And then that's an option, but, but I really felt that was, you know, pretty strong. And well, and it seems like there are enough people, I think, who would be willing to participate in this kind of committee. I mean, if Priscilla particularly would yeah, be like, yeah. I nominate Priscilla. <laughs> well, so, I mean, I, I, that, that's, that's a discussion later on in the agenda. Okay, all right. But, I mean, you know, so, like, I, you know, I, I kind of just, just to pick up on what Eric is saying, it's sort of, to, to me, you sort of get credit for having a plan for those for whom you having a plan is very important, but you can still do whatever you want. So, I, um, that's, that's the way I look at it. And, um, yeah, I didn't see anything in the plan that committed us to do something that I don't want us to do, including have a committee that's going to decide whether we're ever going to cut a tree down in the future. And there isn't like plan police that are going to prosecute us if we deviate from the plan. Right. Uh, oh, so I, 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 I don't know that that's not true. I don't know that it is true either, but you. I, Maybe you could be held, you know, to the to that. Yeah. I mean, I heard what Erica said. There's, there's no penalty if we don't follow through with the commitment. But I don't, well, I think the commitment is to have penalty. a is to have a plan, but but to change mm -hmm. what we've sort of broadly committed to as a community, I don't think there's any penalty to like reevaluating what the plan is. That's my reading of it. <coughs> So we've all said our piece. Um, is there any, you know, so, uh, so, so I'm gonna make a motion that we sign the plan. Uh, any seconds? I'll second yeah. that. Yeah, uh, okay. Uh, all in favor, say aye. Yes. Yes. So, sorry Priscilla, but I think it's unanimous and we're gonna sign the plan. And, and I hope you join, uh, you know, I hope you chair the committee for, you know, I hope you have a, take a real active role in this committee that's going to make these decisions. Well, I would be glad to be on that committee. Great. I would be interested in being on that committee. Yeah. Duly noted. Okay. So appreciate it. I appreciate it. Thank you, Priscilla. The second thing we have to sign would be the contract for the carbon study. Yes. Uh, are there... Just move it. So yes, everybody read this or you saw this. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So I'm gonna I'll make a motion that we sign the uh, the carbon study contract. Yes. Second. Okay. All in favor. Me Aye. too. And just so that people realize that 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 this uh, is uh, is will be payment in full for the study. The town will not be paying for the study out of its own funds. So are there three copies? One for each of us, Tom? No. There's one copy. You yes. sign in two places. Okay. And is that available for the public to see? We, we can make that, yeah. Yeah, the only, interest, the only part that you would probably find interesting is the description in the, study, in the application of the scope of the work and the scope of the study. Mm -hmm. the, other, the other part's really not even worth looking at, but... Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll just hand this one back to you. Yeah, thank you. 
and we will be having a meeting in the next couple of weeks to move forward uh, selecting the vendor for the study. Has the um, request for a proposal or request for a use, has that been put together yet? No, that's what I'm talking about. It's being put together now um, okay. in the, in the uh, town of Williamstown. With the, uh, and, and, when, and when you have that, can that be public as well? Absolutely. Okay. So we have some new business. So the first one is a, uh, a memorandum of agreement with FERCOG for the communication system. Bob, do you want to talk about that? Yes. Um, this all started back in uh, late fall last year. Uh, going to the 800 megahertz radio state one list, and we're all agreeing to go to the 800 megahertz radio system so we have better, more quality uh, radio communications wherever we are in Franklin County. Um, we got the, I, myself and Kenny, Matt, the police chief, got the finance committee and the board of selectmen at the time all on board with this. And we had put the article on town meeting floor in May, and uh, a pot of money was approved. I think it was 20, don't quote me exactly, 20, well, 26,000, I think it was, for our share of the radio, new radios that would be being purchased. So, but then the COVID hit, things you know, got messed up, everybody did everywhere in the state, and now just finally got back together. And the state has put out this MOU, Tom, or MOA. Yeah. MOA. That we're asking you people to sign tonight, which starts the process. So we, you, you've already got your money approved that we will need to purchase the radios. This gives the council of governments the approval to go ahead and, and apply for the grant so that the majority of the money to buy these radios in the radio system will be done with the grant. And, uh, so of all the all the towns in Franklin County, every town in Franklin County supported this now. It. Yes. Um, was it Holly that was very reluctant for a while? I and don't know that for a fact. Uh, we I have barely to pass last. Down. Well, this past Tuesday night, Tuesday uh, last Tuesday night, I spent two and a half hours on a Zoom meeting with all the fire chiefs in Franklin County, and the biggest discussion was about this 800 megahertz radio system. Yeah. And everybody felt that they were in favor of. Uh, and so I'm asking that you people sign that tonight because I think the deadline is October 15th, if I remember correctly. It has to be back to the council of governments by then so they can apply for the grant. So uh, I would ask tonight, recommend that you sign that. So are there any questions? That involves no. police, fire, and ambulance. This has been going on, I know, for yeah. a long time. Yeah. Uh, by the time you get your radio, Starlink is going to be available for <laughs> when, you, when, you, when you were doing your radios, it seemed like that was the distant future. And now, now it's like it seems like there's uh, all these options are going to be showing up. Well, I'm, it's really good that the old radios haven't fallen apart yet. They I can I can quote you what what you're, what you're going to be paying for. Uh, I keep my glasses on here. Take my last copy back. See if I. Uh, I just got this sent to me tonight. Uh, allocations okay let's see Conway Conway ambulance is going to be getting four uh, mobile units and uh, it's giving it going to get four portables and two mobile units Conway fire is going to be getting 15 mobile units and eight portable no 15 portables and eight mobile units and Conway police is going to be getting Six portables and three mobile units. And the one mobile unit that I, I had quoted in my figure was for the base station for our EMD department. Uh, new base station for the transport for the heat. So they, they'll be able to talk an eight mega hundred system. And, uh, and the state paying for part of this? State paying the majority of it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was a free radio, the, the system when it came out to us. There was free radios offered by the state through the grant. 
but we all felt that uh, we were better off to upgrade the radio system just a little bit from what they were. And to go with Motorola radios and stuff like that. The cheapest were some other brand uh, other than Motorola. And we've all had Motorola and we've all had really good luck with them over the years. Yeah. So we asked the town to approve the money so we could get the little bit better radios. So, money we've approved already, yeah, right? Yeah, we did. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. But so, so this is this is approving that FERCOG is going to uh, administer. Uh, uh, administer the grant. Yeah. 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 And and the system. And the system, right? Any other issues? No, I move to uh, sign the memorandum agreement. Yeah, I second. Okay, all in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Great. So, is this also just a one signature uh, thing? No, I, I think uh, I just see. It? User agency, town of Conway, one line. Yeah, but yeah, we can all. Sure. Why don't we all sign it? Sure. Send it down. Sure. Okay. Sure. <clears throat> uh, it should probably have a formal vote. We did vote. Oh, we did, did vote. Okay, just sorry, voted. I missed. Uh, That's right. We voted. Who, uh, who moved and seconded? Uh, Phil moved. Erica seconded. I forgot all about how in the non-Zoom world you need pencils and pens, and <laughs> writing instruments. <laughs> <laughs> I printed stuff. I didn't know this stuff. So our next issue is Festival of the Hills. Yes. <laughs> um, have, you know, maybe we can do this. Scott, skip down to the associate firefighter thing and take care of the other issue for. Him. Oh, okay. Great. People. So do you want to talk about, or Bob, do you want to talk about what this is? Well, it's, it's, it's a new position in the fire department uh, where we could have or do have uh, uh, firefighters that, uh, not firefighters, I shouldn't say, make it sound like it's a problem, but, uh, do have a firefighter that doesn't meet all the requirements of, of a full-fledged firefighter it wants to be in town to help anyone else. And so we had to put this, I put this, between Tom and I, we put, and Tom did a great job of that, putting that together. We, we put together the so associates, I guess it's called, right, Tom? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, and it puts restrictions on the people that are, are going to be on this. And right now we have one person only uh, that would uh, put restrictions on things like they can't drive the fire trucks. Uh, uh, they, they, they can't do traffic duty out in traffic, um, but they can help at fire scenes and be under the supervision of all the other firefighters. And uh, because, you know, I look at this as not every person in the world is all created equal. And some people have situations in their life that they, they want to try to help, but they can't meet all the, all the requirements. So I, by doing this, this would make myself very happy and the person that this was written for to start with has agreed to it. I guess Tom will agree there, right Tom? Yeah. Uh, we met with them last week and their parents, or eight parents, and they agreed to it. So uh, the unfortunate thing here is if we don't put this associate brigade into play, we'll have to get you to vote to have the person resign. Mm. Uh, so are we, are we voting on the creation of a position of right. associate firefighter? Right. We also were going to vote to to um, make make the person an associate firefighter. Okay. So we, that, we yeah. That, that's, so does, that's, is, that's all on the same. Does the yeah. I mean, does the position of associate firefighter exist yet, or we're it's we're not just okay. we're, right. we're, creating, we're creating it. Okay. Will this be the position that an adult who joins the fire department that doesn't go through the junior program? might be assigned to? Anybody could be assigned to it. Uh, this person happened to be go through the junior program for a couple of years and turned 18, so that's what sparked this for us. Um, I don't think there will be many that would come under that, the, that categories, uh, but I felt that we didn't want to lose the position. Right. Yeah. For the young gentleman, because he's been with us for a few years, and it's like, you want to keep inside the road and have yeah. this go away once you turn 18. Right. Is there, I mean, 
some possibility that someone who's an associate firefighter might eventually attain the rank of they, they could they could uh, with uh, training and uh, 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 we have a new skills worksheet right. that every firefighter has to fulfill over time. Mm -hmm. There's no deadlines on this skill sheet, but uh, it, it's, it's, it's a, 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 what do we call it, proficiency skill sheet that until they're skilled at uh, driving trucks and can maintain the pumps and operate the truck successfully that they are said, we tell them, you know, you really can't drive. Mm -hmm. If you can't operate the truck, why should you be able to drive it? So, and there's things like that that go into this. So that the, uh, the person that is, this is, was put together for has asked that we would work with some special group, and I can't think of the name of it right now, in Franklin County with this young man uh, to help make him more proficient in things, and they will help us do that. And I think that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. So, uh, no, I, I actually think that this is a... Uh, um, a, a pretty a, a pretty impressive solution to the situation. Mm -hmm. right? you know, yeah, I, I take I take further note of the compliment from the fire chief headed towards the uh, <laughs> town administrator. Thank and, you very uh, much. The, the creative uh, yeah. solution in this regard. So, um, all that being said, I move to make the appointment of Michael O'Connell as associate firefighter. So this is we're both going to create the position yeah. and appoint Michael yeah. O'Connell to the yeah. position. Yeah. So I'll second that. Anybody say aye? Aye. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I mean, when I wanted to start on the fire department as a volunteer, that would be where I got Right, right. That, that's why I was wondering. To be a junior, one of us wanted so. to join your fire department, not knowing anything. Right? <laughs> okay. okay. On to the festival of the hill. Thank you. I'm going to leave. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Bob. Thank you very much. Great. Great. This is Sue McDonald, uh, co chair with Sheila Harrington of the festival, and I've got Michelle Harris here also, who's been a board member and uh, grizzled, <laughs> grizzled uh, veterans of the festival, one and all. So uh, we're here tonight because uh, this issue arose when. Um, we were asked by Frontier Regional to loan the tables that have been, uh, you know, earmarked as Festival of the Hills' own. Um, if we would loan them to uh, Frontier to use for COVID, so that they could uh, have distance learning, I guess I'm not exactly sure how it's all working. I think they might be outside, but um, in the process of uh, arranging for them, uh, it was Julie. Um, Patty. Julie Petty, that wanted to have access to the town hall and reached out to Tom to ask for access. And at that point, Tom expressed that he felt that the tables truly belonged to the town because they were purchased when the festival was part of the town. So we're here tonight because there's far more um, than just the tables that were purchased during the time that the festival was part of the town. Um, the things that were purchased were purchased with the money raised by the festival. So they were not, to our knowledge, uh, purchased with town funds, with, you know, taxpayer money. Uh, so we really are asking for you to give us clarification on ownership of this. Uh, because I think this is if we're going to just say that the tables belong to the town and um, we really need to have some clarification. <laughs> so we, and I don't know if you need any history on why we're no longer with the town, if you're familiar with that. No, I, I am familiar with that sad and tragic history. I'd like to write a new chapter in that history <laughs> with you all. And, um, so is the festival yeah. now a 501c3? Is it a yes. separate? We are now a 501c, and I will be honest, we are, you know, we're, we're mm -hmm. struggling with with trying to keep it going with lack of uh, volunteers and people. Um, Every endeavor like this all across the country is. Yeah. And, um, and it's, it's, it's remarkable how many people it takes to put something like this on. And, uh, and the, the, the level of service that's required to do it and the level of sacrifice that's required to do it and, um, and how it's just a remorseless annual thing that never goes away. <laughs> because, but you love it and you do it because it's your town and you love it. And, um, 
And then you have stuff like this that just like feels makes you feel like uh, right. So, um, so my town doesn't love me, and 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 I and I, I get all that. I really do. Um, like it, and and you know, I'm, I, like I, I read what Tom, and I read Tom's point, and like I think it to, for to, in Tom's to Tom's credit, I think that it's sort of like his position to look out for the interests of the town in the abstract, you know, as well as, you know, in reality, but just sort of as an institution and to put the best argument forward for the town as an institution. With this stuff, I've always thought that the tables were the festival of the hills. I remember being president of the historical society every year we needed to borrow tables for the annual picnic and it would be who's in the festival, who's running the festival this year, who do we have to call and bug for their tables? And um, just the one thing is, like, what if the table breaks? Is it a town all of a sudden going to say, oh, can you replace? No. If if they're the town tables and they break, then the town is responsible for them. In the past, when we needed new tables, the festival got new tables. Yeah. So it and has and to be. And, and it's like it's, and the sort of there's an unfairness sort of as applied to your organization which is that it's only looking at sort of one little tiny piece of a mathematical equation right. and not looking at like all the rest of the things that happen. You get a, an annual disbursement from the town back in, back when that was happening and um, lots of stuff happened with that money, lots of stuff was spent, lots of stuff was lost, lots of stuff was gained and the, the tables were part of that somehow and then to just pick 10 years later and say, oh, those tables were the towns, thank you very much. The manual disbursement was something that happened for two years. The festival's been purchasing these tables for the last 15 years. But when the split happened, was there no written agreement oh, on who owned what? Or no, right right on. how that happened? The festival raised money, the festival purchased, the festival gave scholarships with the money that was left over from said festival. What, what we did do to get the money out of the coffers, because it was in town accounts, was we set up a contract for um it wound up being i believe it was three years no it's two is it just two so we had um so that because we they could only give us a certain amount they couldn't give us the whole amount of money that was in the festival earmarked account in one sitting so they had to stretch it over so we actually set up as a as a contract that we were running the festival we were contracted by the town to run the festival for those a uh, few years to be able to get that money from the town. Um, so that, we got that money, we've, uh, you know, unfortunately we also have now um, extra expenses because we're not part of the town, we have to carry an insurance policy. We have to pay for emergency services. We do are, we are fortunate where a lot of people will volunteer. Um, but we are struggling now. Um, we're not, you know, to be able to, for the phone. Oh, sure. Yep. Sorry. Um, so we're we're just we're struggling to financially not be in the red. Um, you know. Is so, there any other property besides the tables that are in this view? Well, well, not in this view. In, the way I look at it is, if if this is the new the said rule that if it was purchased during our time with the town, then it belongs to the town. Then every single thing that is stored at the basement of the bank, except for 20 feather banners and three scholarship banners and some of the games belongs to the town and i, I would just like to apply so I, I actually had a role in it because i was part of the committee at frontier that was discussing where amongst our four towns there were stashes of tables and tents and things and it was me that put the, these on the list and it ended up being julie petty assigned to make that call etc cetera, etc cetera. but um the way it was on the list was festival of the hills tables um and like going yeah. further, if they are going to stay with the festival, we would never stop any town entity from borrowing. We never have. Yeah, we never have. Yeah, we never have. Been here. They've always been used for anybody who's uh, using this room, and we haven't policed them per se. But, um, but, but my assumption is that, that the reverse of that 15. is true too. That that however this works out, you are free to use these tables for the festival, uh, or uh, just as you're saying, the town is free to use them like we are tonight. Sure, okay. but I, I, got, I, I don't see that these were ever the towns, and I don't, I don't see that like renouncing them or do, declaring these surplus is, is a route to go because that assumes that they were the towns to, to, to declare a surplus. I see these as Festival of the Hills Committee property 
always was, still is. And I, just, I don't just like everything else in the bank because it's the town. Just like all the stuff that I have no back. idea about. Are and these festivals? Yeah. 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 These, These are, are the ones. Does yes. the town have any other tables? There are a few more upstairs. Erica, what happens is these tables have been around forever and they've been stacked and right we here. Use them for like the, like the Girl Lord Scouts for uses the, it, the voting uses yeah. it, the Council on Aging uses them. There's never been an issue with borrowing. And if somebody actually wanted to borrow them outside of here, like for graduation or a wedding party, they would call, we would say, absolutely, just please return them clean. And it's been running like that for, for years. I think one of our concerns is, is because of, because of the, the d direction that the festival has been going in for the last few years, it, for me personally, I will not speak for the rest of the festival, it feels like one more roadblock. Yeah. And then little roadblocks, little roadblocks, little roadblocks. But I'm not yeah. sure what the roadblock would be. I don't know either, to be honest. I, I mean, other than hard feelings, which which certainly we want to try to figure well, out how not to do that. Yeah, and what I was saying before, if the town owns the tables, don't ask us to replace them or fix them, because it's not our problem anymore. Well, it's not even that. I mean, that when, would, the reality is, if they break, you throw them out, and you get new sixty-dollar tables or whatever. It's, Maybe. Yeah. But if you don't, if you don't need sixteen tables. And to break, you don't need them all, so you just throw them away and don't expense it. You don't use, you don't buy more tables. But the festival is accustomed. I mean, we have every table so That's specifically like laid out that day to the you know Cafe Conway and Tom Riccardi and the nurses and everything. Every there's like a specific need. So we come in the weekend before the festival, and all of a sudden those sixteen. Um, designated tables become 10 designated tables and now the festival is in a pinch buying more stuff that we can't afford yeah it, and that's that's this you know like I like I, uh, when you volunteer on stuff it's these little things I, you know I, you call them hurdles to me that it's a sense of like nipping at the heels just mm -hmm. like yeah, just like you, you, it just makes it stickier and like less fun, and it's just things like that that that's the death of volunteerism. Mm -hmm. well, and, and also, I'd like to point out that the festival has been around for over fifty years. It is, yeah. it's a hallmark of this town. It's really something we would love to see it continue. But we really we need to see some support from the town itself too. That you're willing to. So I'm you know. going to make a motion that we declare that these tables are the property of the Festival of the Hills Committee, period. That's that. That's the motion. Does that, is there, I mean, I'm just, what you're saying is like if they're here in Town Hall, everyone's going to use them? Yeah, they always have, and we, we've yeah. never had a problem with no. that. So you wouldn't want to like move them to the bed. I don't know yet. Really, there the the well, there, there is, but we we've never even talked about moving them because everybody's needed the tables. Yeah. And anytime, like at the bank, there's also trash cans and some other stuff. Anybody needs them, they get in contact with right. me, and I get them to them. Well, but Pass this is boxes. this is the first time I know of that we've had a conflict, and which is mm -hmm. why this came up. Uh, um, that we had more tables set up in here for for select board meetings and for other meetings that we could do during the pandemic, and and then Julie or somebody came and took the tables. Uh, I, I, we don't have a problem lending them. It's, that's not it. No, what he's saying is they're used to they're used to coming in here and being able to use them, but suddenly they're gone because Julie borrowed them. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, it's a pandemic. It, it, the children. Right. Outdoor education. We bought blankets for every kid. Right now. They need a table to go with their blanket. <laughs> so are all the 16 tables down at Frontier now? Did Julie take them Minus off? Minus what you see. Minus, Minus one. Yeah. Frontier, okay. I think some of them made it up to common ground. But normally, but, Erica, they, these don't leave this room. Right. Yeah. yeah. This right. is just an unusual circumstance. Yeah. Right. The yeah. pandemic has created a lot of unusual circumstances. But the, And this is one of them. And it's going to be a point in time when even with our blankets, we can't keep the kids out in the snow. And the tents will come down, and the tables will go in. So is, I guess my question is, if we designate that these 16 tables belong to the Festival of Hills Committee, is that like a thing that we have to officially like sign so that like 
We, it's I mean, not, like, it's not we, signing anything. It's not, it's not like, signing anything. I mean, can that just be it's an just, informal it's just, agreement? My hope is that, that somehow we coordinate better. You know, mm -hmm. you, you know, you guys could say, oh, the Girl Scouts could take them, but the, the town might think that it has a use for them, or you know. Can we um, just say that the festival committee always has first dibs? Like, they're the, like, you know, that they're that's the that's owners it. Yeah, but basically. That's why I made that motion. <laughs> <clears throat> that we would, yeah, that we would be the owners. Yes, we would be the owners. Yes, and we can always send an email if somebody's requesting through us. Say, hey, the school needs them. Do you guys have a uh, need for them as well? Right. Uh, yeah. I mean, is it like how often is it that like Never. someone Never. here needs sixteen tables? Never. Never. It's it, the it, festival well. that needs the sixteen <laughs> tables. That's about it. So. Okay. So, Tom would like to say something too. In, in, in my role as a doomsayer and. Uh, okay and uh, legal persnickety person. Uh, I'll just note that it, it's not actually legal for the town to do that, but if that's what the select board does, then that's what they did. Well, then does the town... Not legal for the town to do what? I'm sorry? Not legal for the town to do what? Um, to give property away. Um, but is it the town's when the festival money paid for it? And, and if it is the town's, then the town has to get it. We'll take everything out of the basement. You guys can find a place to store it because you're saying it's all the town stuff. I'm not saying that. But, um, but, but that, that gets to the crux uh, of what this issue is. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. Um, the town has no interest in anything except the tables. So there, there's there's no value to the town in any of the signs or any of the other things that that you have. Um, so I, I don't I don't see that as being anything. That we would be interested in anyway. So um, you're cherry picking what you want to own from the stuff that the town owns. Well, I don't have any problem with declaring all of the other stuff surplus property, but, but just, just, just to get back to the to the legality, yeah, as a town committee, all of the money you raised was town money, and and you gave away town money because you were a town committee. So that's it's a it's just. Uh, fairly simple that but way. that's not a straight line though Tom that's not a straight line from a, the amount that the town gave them to the purchase of these tables it's a line that had many different branches and this and that and the other it, it's not the money that the town gave them all the money that they raised as a town committee was town money I, I mean so that's the crux of this issue over whose money was it that you raised that you gave away in scholarships or all of that and then technically that was town money I mean, I believe the split happened because you didn't want to no, start said, dealing with it like it was town. Tom money. said a town entity cannot raise money for scholarships. The the um, the the anniversary committee, which the Festival of the Hills was formed as in '62, um, was actually only supposed to exist for five years, um, and you know it kept going, but that caused problems um, financially and and legally. So um, so there, there there is a way to make this a town, to make you a town festival again. And I remember last year coming up to you with some of that paperwork. It's a pain in the ass. I didn't but get no paperwork. We talked about well, We talked um, about it, yeah. but you didn't give me any paperwork. But, but it's a pain in the ass, but it's doable. And um, being a 501c3 is a pain in the ass too. Yeah. And, but but I mean there would be those savings that you that, that you outline. But it would be you know a town committee, and it would be the town. The, there's rules. The, there's scholar. The, there the, you can have a town scholarship committee. There's a part in the law, and we looked at we looked at, at this, and um, we talked. This was last year that we talked about this town, and um, it's doable. Okay. Yeah. Well, and the, and the way it was originally set up was the scholarship committee was different from the festival of the hills committee. There was some crossover, but they were different. The, the makeup of the committees were different when it was set up originally. And I mean, but that's sort of related but separate. But to, to me, you know, like I, I get, I get that. I, I remember being told that the the. the the town really shouldn't be in the business of, of of celebrations and 
It shouldn't be that, that these are things that are outside the core business, the core function of government. Um, but, but to me, it, it's like these kinds of glue things that hold a community together are like so much more important than just a few dollars and cents on the balance sheet and like mm -hmm. creating a civic identity. And like the festival is what you do. You're in Conway, you go to the festival, you work at the festival. When your kids get to school, you volunteer at the festival until your kids are a senior and then you put in for your scholarship and you feel like you paid it, you know, you paid, you paid it forward and now it's up to the next thing. And it's like this tradition, that it's what you do. And so I, to me, you should be part of the town the town should have an annual outlay to the festival at, 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 that, that demonstrates that, and I think that there's massive support for that in the town, but you'll never get 100% support. I remember people squawking about a couple thousand headed, up, headed your way. That'll always happen, but you got massive majorities that would support it. Um, it's town meeting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And that um, rather than standing on your own two feet and being told that that's what you have to do, there, you can come back to Mother Town. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 this is this issue here. No, it's not, but but it's sort of related because yes. the town the tables are the town is the is the festival. We should all be we well, should all be it's, all, it's pretty obvious that we're already intertwined pretty thin yes, from yeah. the years. So yes. um, you know, to Tom's point, it does if if it's true then everything that's sitting in the bank's basement is also, except for what Michelle listed, is also town property. And I know that you're saying they're not interested in it, but if we're talking, you it know. It shouldn't matter it if should, it's town property. It it's town property. Bank. Right. It should yeah. be at the bank. So the bank could also evict us, let's say that, and say that the town should be, you know, storing that for you if it's, so, if it's town property. So, so. Well, and didn't that used to be stored upstairs before the bank? It was stored in the basement of the town hall, some of it. The what? Town office. Town office. Um, yeah, I, I understand what you're saying, Tom. But to me, it's not. I'm not going to get caught up on legalisms or anything. I don't. I understand exactly what you're saying. But to me, these have always been festival of the hills table. Legalisms are why we're here. Yeah, but yeah, lock me up. I don't want to get, get into this. I I just feel bad. Um, that, yeah. Well, I, I think to come that the whole thing. It's like ten years after the tables were bought, and then to say, oh, they're ours. It's just. It's just not a good look. It's just not. Um, so if we gave you guys the tables, though, I mean, is that does that create some issue that like now private property, uh, like I don't know, is stored in the town hall? Is no, that no, I don't think so. We we can, you can store them, we can store them anywhere that we want. I mean, you know. I don't think the storage is, is the issue. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just like, I mean, because Tom brought up about, you know, like it's not legal to give, like, town property to this. Right. Thing, in other words, I, if, if you have an assumption they're town property, then we can't give them away. Right. Uh, now, I mean, I feel like we'd have, like, really, if someone came and said, like, oh my God, you gave away, like, 15 tables to the Festival of the Hills, Bible Mercy 3, I feel like you could. Like, I don't have any problem. The town never, saying, cut, a like the town town never cut a check for 16 tables. It was, <laughs> no, but a town committee did. Which is, which is the same thing. Um, I, I, think, I think that that's, that's the difference that makes it legal, though. That makes it legal to just say these are theirs. It's not the same thing. It's a legalistic thing where you, you know, you, you're, you're paying them a, a, a whatever. For a couple of years, you gave them... A, a, a stipend out of, t out, of, out of town meeting that they used for a host of sundry things, and, and um, right. But it's not just that stipend, Phil. I mean, you keep bringing up the stipend. It, you, you, you know, if the, the planning board bought a projector for their meetings, it would be a town projector. Because for instance, every every year that the town gave them money, they gave more than that money in scholarships directly in scholarships. So so. Every cent that the town gave them has been given to Scott. These, when this was money that they raised on their own. As a, as a town committee. <laughs> Sometimes town the town committees, individuals working on their own, bake sales outside of town um, that were just, you know, um, given to the thing. People, when I, you know, you were volunteers coming in and manning booths and then saying, here's the money. And it, I guess, I guess part of it that's that's hard for me to swallow too is you keep saying that we've been a town committee. 
really? Because we really haven't gotten town committee support. We've been we've been running on our own. I mean, we're the latchkey kids. Mm -hmm. We've been doing everything on our own, really, without permission and or support because we've never had to ask permission and we've never needed support. We come in, we do our job, we give away our money, we go home, we clean up. And so it, it's, it kind of rubs me the wrong way to be called a town committee when we, we've not really been welcomed by the town. We're, we're kind of like the one day a year pain in the butt. We're like the October red-headed stepchild. I mean, that's, that's that, that, that's, that's kind of what's rubbing me the wrong way right now. A lot of people view the Festival of the Hills as a royal pain in the neck when it comes to town, townspeople, meet town committees, meaning the town fire department and the town police department and the town what have you. The biggest example I'd have is that the, the, you were covered by the town insurance. Right. Right? Correct. We were covered by that. And that's the least we can do. And that's that's it. And that's really the only support we got from the town was being allowed to plug in to electrical outlets and go under the umbrella of the town insurance well, and, for and one day. A, and, you know, and, and the, the police volunteered and and the ambulance crew volunteered. Yep. So, and that's, uh, that's the way it should be. I mean, there were things that, that, that occurred because you were considered a town committee. But in the same, the flip side of that too, there's a lot of money that came in that was straight up donations. Great, no, so, right. I mean, it was, you know, people that donated towards tables, you know, so it wasn't, I mean, I understand what you're saying. I, I understand that, but um, I really think we need to, I, what Phil's saying is I think for the, you know, the legacy of this, the fact that these are, we're talking, we're not talking about brand new property. We're not talking about taking this away from the use of anybody here in the town. We just want to clarify that what we walked away from when we separated from the town is the, is the festivals. That's really what we're saying. You yeah. allowed us to take money with us. So I don't understand why the tables can't be part of that. Well, the money was a uh, contract for producing the festival. It was a there was a service that was provided. So, yeah, that's that's how that. Well, and technically, that's how we wrote it. But I mean, you could have also just flat out said, "No, that's the towns, and you're on your own, and you start from scratch." So. I certainly wish the tables had been part of that agreement. Uh, yes. Well, when that agreement was happening, none of us thought the tables would ever be an issue exactly. because exactly. they were always just like the trash cans and the. I don't even know what else is down there. There's a, tons of stuff in my basement down there. And it was never an issue. So that's why it wasn't part of it, because everybody just knew that was the festival stuff. Tents. There's a couple pop-up tents. I think we've sort of uh, talked about the parameters. There's, there's, right. there's a pending yeah. motion. If nobody supports that, then do something else. Huh? But so you going to second it? I'm going to second it. I second okay. Phil's motion. I feel like it's a, I, I mean, Tom doesn't feel like it's technically legal, but I feel like I it's close enough for me. So I would feel much better if about this motion <laughs> if, 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 like you said, that, that you would send an email when when you tell somebody that they can have the tables. You know, yeah. I, I mean, really, in whichever direction this goes, there ought to be some coordination between. The town who treats them as if they're theirs, and the festival who treats them as as if they're there. Exactly. Like when Julie wanted to borrow the tables, one of the first things that came up were, town election is coming, and town election uses tables, so that is something that we feel the responsibility to consider before saying, ah, take what you want. Right. Right. So we're not going into this irresponsibly, but yeah. we're just. No, I, I'm not saying you are, but but that, that's why we're here today. Mm -hmm. So but, so to clearly communicate. So I think yes. moving forward, we need to have a communication. If there's the tables are going to, you know, to be used, then I think it needs to go both ways. Yeah. So if the yeah. town's approach that they're steered towards the festival, and um, and the festival will do the same courtesy, so that we don't end up with somebody coming in to use this room, finding no tables. Right. Right. 
Right. So there's a motion. Okay, second. there's a motion and second. Everybody say aye. If aye. I'll say aye too. Thank you very You're much. You're proud owner. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I'm uh, sorry for the bad reason. Um, um, just for better the, next year. But we need volunteers. <laughs> but but um, I do. I, I think you should. You, we should really think about becoming part of the town. Becoming part of the town again. We didn't um, want to break off in the first place. No, we didn't. Yeah. I mean, I, like I, the I mean, I took a good look at it again. It is every bit of the pain in the ass that I described it as being, but it's doable. And. Uh, I mean, the issues that we had with it, and I, I'm not going to beat this up because I know that's not what we're here for, but the issues that we had, one of the issues that we had with it is requesting money and filling out paperwork and waiting two weeks when, when yeah. we might be saying, oh, I'm going to BJ's this weekend and there's a huge sale on water, we're going to pick up bottled water, oh, we got to request money. And so right now we have the luxury of being able to say, I got the debit card, I'm going to BJ's, there's a great sale, I'm going to pick this stuff up for the festival. And that, like I said, I don't want to get yeah, into that tonight, but that's just an example would, of I mean, one of the things that was kind of a sticking point. It's like, oh, we're not just going to be able to buy things when they're on sale. We're going to have to go through all this formality. Right, I imagine the worst of the formality is that you'd have to follow up with meeting laws. <laughs> we already do that. Great. Yeah. That, that, uh, they're, they're a pain. We already do that. Yeah. Yeah. She's good at that. <laughs> so I mean that's that's just one of the little things that was that yeah. was kind of a sticking point with with the new rules of being a town committee is yeah. But but I would like to discuss it further. Like you yes. Know, All right, I'll so stand we won't you, we won't who, take up your time tonight, but okay. so, um, All right. Yep. I'll send you. Okay. All right. Well, thank you all. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate your time. You too. Thank you. Oh, boy. <laughs> so we have two issues left. I think both of them are discussion issues, um, but one, one of them has to do with creating this town committee uh, for the forest and trails. So wasn't that wasn't there a proposal that that be like a subcommittee, the open space committee, or that we try to get people in the open space committee to take that on? What it sounded like Jan Janet said. There is no open space committee. <laughs> well, she's the open space. She chairs the she open is. space committee, and she said we don't want to take that on. Uh, they're they're busy with an awful lot of projects already. It's not just that. So the the um. Like for for instance, where we're going with the carbon credit study, it's not it's not yet ripe enough for a committee to work on. But at the same time, I wouldn't want to be working on things that a committee would have jurisdiction over at cross purposes to a committee without the committee being. So like, I, if we're if we're going to set up a committee, I would prefer to table it for a couple of months. That would be fine uh, until I mean, that, that's until, until, yeah, until this thing about. until this but thing freshens up. And yeah. then you can task the committee with certain things. But I, I would think that the for the structure of it, I would want the chair to be a select board member and to keep this under the select board's wing a little bit. Um, because uh, how you manage a project like the, t like the carbon credit thing is going to determine whether you get the thing approved or not. And yeah. if you just scatter it to the winds of volunteers, um, uh, yeah, um, with, with you know, with no ability to well, right. shape what they're doing. Right now, you're it. So, uh, <laughs> so um, well, one one good way to help shape what a committee does is to give it a, a very clear charge. Right. And, um, we don't we don't really we haven't really done that right in this time. But if you'll notice in the piece that I sent out, I, I am yeah. suggesting something. And of course, it's just a draft, but um, it's an example of, of something that that you might consider. Yeah, I saw that and I thought, well, you know, it makes sense to involve initiatives beyond the plan, and that's exactly what this carbon, and so that's something that, like, uh, yeah, let's just wait a well, little bit. Well, the plan included the carbon thing. Right, it, it did. Right, so, and that's what I'm saying, that just wait until that's a little bit more ripe to so we'll put that on committee for a couple months, yeah. Table that. Plus, it's like okay. entering winter, nobody gets involved with forest management. <laughs> and, and the last piece of new business had to do with creating a drop box for, for people to 
you know, I'll say some midtown business, which would include voting. Uh, uh, and yeah, that had been put forward from last yeah. time because. Uh, uh, I mean, I just I, I had a question about like I. In, in theory, support the Dropbox proposal, but is that actually like is there like the legality of someone dropping their ballot in a town drop box as opposed to putting it in the mail or delivering it in person to the clerk? Like I don't know if there's if there's something that we'd be responsible for if we would be. Right. But and some of has a box that looks like a like like a blue post off a blue mailbox, you know, like they would have in town. Uh, firmly attached to the ground, and people can drop all kinds of tumbles. So, like your there. ballot, your like paying your taxes. Okay, all right. So, as long as there's precedent for it, that, that that's a thing that I, I to, you know, I, I I I never heard any complaints about it. You know, apparently, there was one in the paper about yeah. a ballot, but um, I I haven't heard any report from our town clerk that that was the town's fault or that anything had to do with the town or that anything yeah, to me we have a drop box in town it's called the post it's called the mailbox right in the front of the post office or in Lori's office or Lori and I got I don't really get I mean I'm all for, I'm all for solutions to problems but I I don't know that this is a problem that needs a solution I've never heard Anybody say, gee, I just wish I could drop my tax bill off at three in the morning because you know I just can't deal with it any other time. I, I don't, I don't really know. Uh, uh, just, just one comment. Uh, if you drop your mail in the boxes outside the post office, it goes, it goes through Springfield. Springfield. Yeah. Correct. You have to go inside to drop it in the Conway. Only. This is true. The, the only difference is that the one right outside is a twenty-four-seven service. Uh, but it may, yeah, it may take. Um, considerably long it does. to get it somewhere. does it does and the other part of that equation too is that um, it's really important that we as a town and people in it support our post office and use it as much as possible um, because we're not going to have it if we don't use it as much as possible and sooner or later they're going to cut back on post offices like they did 10 15 years ago and what they use to cut back on post offices how many pieces of mail that post office handles. And so anything that we do to take mail out of the circulation in our town re reduces our chances of keeping a post office here in the future. So, like a, it, it, so, so I'm not hearing a big drive to no. build the drop box. Yeah, the, the, the main reason to do it was would be for people who didn't, who either it wasn't convenient to come during business hours, which is when Town, so anybody who works can't come by the town office. And then even for people who didn't want to come by the town office, they would, um, uh, you know, during the pandemic, they might not want to go inside a public building. Yeah. So yeah, I was thinking this would be a pandemic related expense that I would request reimbursement for. But it would be about $1,500, just so you know, total. And I, and I thought, I, I thought the, the prices that you found actually were quite a bit less than what I thought. And I, I, will, I will definitely concede that um, my arguments pale, you know, are less significant as the price went down. But, I don't uh, think we could get anything done by this election. Yeah, I, right, mean, I, so, I think there oh, no, are no, we, we could. We could definitely have it installed by the election. Yeah, but I, as you say, it's I, I haven't heard a lot of um, a lot of problems. I'm not sure that I would, but um, you, it, it may be it may be overkill. Certainly. Great. Okay. Table that. Someone else Put it. Put it. Yeah. Just a discussion. <laughs> yep. Tom, any items uh, not anticipated in 48 hours? Uh, I do not have any. No one else? So do you have an update? Yes, I do. Back to the traditional. Yeah. Update. Okay. Uh, just... Just departmental news for now. Um, I filed for CARES reimbursement for FY20 
based on figures from the accountant who's tracking all COVID expenditures, provided department heads submit their invoices correctly. Uh, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, I requested $2,679, perhaps only 2,293 is eligible, as I did not hear from all departments when I made the original filing, the, the request for money. Uh, though I have requested the, addi the additional amounts be treated as an amendment. Uh, this, of course, does not include the Chromebooks from the grammar school. That will be an FY21 invoice. So the uh, grammar school is oh, yeah. providing Chromebooks to all the students? Yeah, and then, and then I, I cut that second bit because I thought, oh no, they asked me to put it on the agenda next time. So, because there was some general thought that it might be a good thing, so skip that. Um, the highway garage project is waiting for a plan from Franklin County Technical School for doing the trades work we have arranged for them. Uh, the good news is that the project was approved by the Board of State Examiners of Plumbers and Gas Fitters, which is charged with approving technical school project proposals. Hmm. Their work on the highway garage hinges on the school's overall educational plan, which as of September 3rd had not yet been finalized, and I can say that we still have not heard final word from them on that. Their main electrical teacher is no longer with them, a situation which Walter Goodridge is working to solve so that we don't have to rebid for the electrical work. Poor Walter. Mm. So Walter's going to go in and teach it himself? <laughs> Gee. I received uh, more information on the Micro Enterprise Forgivable Loan Program for COVID-related losses. Any low to moderate income owner is eligible to apply. This is for businesses having five or fewer employees. Uh, and the figure is based on the last eight weeks, so it may well include those otherwise. This is for the Greenfield uh, program that we approved? Yes, otherwise above that bracket. Uh, the loans are forgiven upon documentation of eligible expenses, which include payroll, rent, and other COVID-associated costs. The Franklin County Community Development Corporation is having two information sessions for businesses next week on Tuesday and Thursday. The application deadline is October 15th. There is a total of $600,000 available for the county, excluding Roe and Monroe. More information is available on the FCCDC website, fccdc.org. Can you explain that a little bit? That Franklin Franklin County what a forgivable loan means? Technically, the money that's being given out is a loan to businesses for COVID-related losses. If they submit invoices and the paperwork and all of that, and as you mentioned, there's paperwork in pretty much everything. Uh, uh, if they submit all the proper documentation, the loan will be forgiven. So it's basically a payout to very small businesses who have been negatively affected by the pandemic. Uh, so um, anything we can do to get the word out there is, is Should good. we be joining this? information session no the information Did sessions are for businesses so um, knowing any businesses with five or fewer people well one of the problems is everybody's supposed to register their business with the town clerk uh, I believe fewer than half the businesses in town are registered with the town clerk so we don't really know who they are or how many employees they have that sort of thing so it's going to be kind of a word-of-mouth thing um, there is something up on the website um, but it does apply, and it applies to sole proprietorships too, though. Five or fewer employees. That's that's the. It, it doesn't say anything yeah. about the the. Because you don't have to register sole proprietorships. Well, that that's a, a different matter than who's eligible for yeah. okay. this. Do they suggest examples of what businesses might do with this money? It's for payroll and rent and other COVID-related costs that they can't make because, you know, they have suffered. Former expenses that they, that, that they spent due to COVID or? Yeah, so if they, were, if they were putting in something new, that would not be, that would not be eligible. 
the cost of the crime scene tape around the bars that was at the bar store. But you know, if, if they came if, off today, you're allowed to sit in bar stools today in this state. If, if, um, yeah. So the Conway Inn. That's uh, what I, I'm I, thinking I, I of. Yes. You know, I asked fewer. Um, I'm thinking bakers might have fewer, though. I don't know. They hire a lot of part-time people to help out, so I'm not sure about that. Um, you know, probably not Pop Poplar Hill. Uh, you know, they're a larger right, concern. Right. Right. Um, but. Um, yeah, any help anybody can be of spreading this news is would be really, really helpful. And especially if before Tuesday or Thursday of next week when they can, yeah. you know, learn whether or not, you know, it might be a good fit for their business. Uh, and finally, we are currently undergoing our biennial audit. This time for FY20, if you visit the town office, you may find representatives from Roselli, Clark, and Associates there through Thursday. Can you talk Great. about? Can you talk about why that? Oh, that's a new auditor, right? No, that's our. That's the one we have been using. Oh, whatever happened to the Deerfield outfit? Haven't used them for well over a decade. I'm thinking oh. 15 years. Really? Well, and the thing, I I actually um. It, it, it's good practice. Scamming, scamming. Yeah, it's it's. We had the father. Right. And people were dissatisfied with him. Now it's being run by the son, right. who's really good. He is. And it is good practice to vary your auditor, yeah. um, you know, every seven to ten years, something like that. Now that, that may be for annual audits, but it's just so you get fresh eyes and a fresh perspective of looking at things. So we now, we, we're, we're in a three audit contract with Roselli Clark. So when that's over, it was my intention to go out to bid for auditing services. Yeah. Great. So okay, quick, brief, 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 brief. So that's so Scanlon, the son, um, is the Frontier School Committee's auditor. So he came and did, delivered his report last year, and uh, he was chewing gum while he was talking. So I said, Mr. Scanlon, this is a school. You're chewing gum while you're talking. You're going to get demerits for that. And everybody laughed. And it was funny. So they get out and put it was funny. It was really funny. He started getting all upset. So he, he, had, he said he has a medical condition. He needed to chew gum to keep his throat and whatever while he talks. And he felt really, really... Uh, it just You can't make any observations about people anymore. Sorry. So that's all I have. Any concerns of the select? Um, one of the things that I've uh, just not, yeah, concerned, I liked how the new business had several points of discussion without votes being required. And, you know, I, I, I don't know if I ever mentioned this before, that your school, your school committees have uh, rules um, for governing agendas, that, internal rules that say that every, they're, they're, it's a first, before the school committee can vote on something, there's a, process called first read where it has to be brought up before the committee first before you can vote on it and that can be dispensed with by a vote of the committee in the interests of the institution for whatever and this is but this is state law or as our school I had thought that it was the that that was the law regarding agenda it turns out that I looked I looked it up and I couldn't find that in the law regarding agenda but I thought it's a really good practice and and that the whole, the, the, the number of times that I felt like after, you know, afterwards I had a thought that, or a question that I wish I could have asked. And it's because, you know, you're, you're looking at something for the first time, you're hearing from someone, and you don't really get a chance to consider things and in the fullness of time, like debate it. And I, l last week's thing about the open space thing with, you know, there, there was questions I had afterwards. I wish we could have, you know, ha ha had, had a thing that, to, 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 whatever. And I, I realize with FERCOG, that's all, all my, because they're they're these they're they're late they're always late on the on the calendar about everything when they get around to you it's rush 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 you got two days to blah, 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 yeah. deadline deadline and um, but it, you know and so that's when you say okay we need to vote on this now but as a general rule um, the idea of having a first read or a discussion um, to be to be listed on the you know and for people to generally be told hey you know you. 
bring it up to the select board, you're going to talk about it once, and plus it allows residents the chance to think about it too and see about it and then comment on a vote the next week. Yeah, but that's true. Um, I well, just, I like the idea of having a discussion just because we're not allowed to talk outside of right. the and, that, and that's too. But so, so it, you know, the, the, the school committee calls it first read, and, and, it, and that's how it's written as, as a policy. It's a first read policy for the agenda. Well, I, that's kind of how the courts for, work. I mean, people come and like make their arguments, and then you have time to like recess and think about it before you make a decision. So I'm not, I don't, I'm not, I'd be all for adopting that as a policy, and, and uh, but making sure that we can waive it. I would the, rather let's just try to do it. All right, <laughs> but, but, I mean, but I agree with you. But, but uh, you, you know, just always know that you can waive it if. Yeah. if if there's a reason to, but um, but you know, but just generally, man, this, this always having to like be on and like not be able to think about things. And, you know, a lot of times, I'm just off. You know, I will, uh, I will note that the select board did the opposite for the festival of the hills, which was not down for a vote, and the select board did make a vote. That see, that's a perfect example. Yes. <laughs> that's why rules are good. Except sometimes you don't want to follow them either. Right. right. It's good to know where the lines are that you're not following. So how about mail? Uh, I don't believe uh, there I, was any uh, I don't official any mail. Folder, no? uh, I will note that there are still unsigned warrants over there. There are. We have to remember to sign the warrants before we go yes, tonight. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, well, any announcements? Um, shoot. Should we, what's going on? Um, no, yeah, what, there was, what do there we was have in a flu clinic? The, the, uh, that's like the full. It's coming up real in, soon. In, real soon, right? Yes. It's in Jericho, right? right? Yes. Well, drive in, it, drive in. You don't got to get out of your car. Drive through. I think it's being held at the Deerfield Garage. garage. Yes. Yes. And then there's one here in Conway uh, in early November. Right. Okay. Because I've emailed the Board of Health and to volunteer for both, and I've not heard back from them. So I'll just try. Oh, harder. I didn't see they were still looking for volunteers. Oh, no, really? Yeah. I'll try. I'll try harder. Yeah. In Deerfield, the Board of Health is the select board. There is no. There is no Board of Health in Deerfield. Yeah, I think that's who, who, you know, I think Carolyn S. is the is the chair of the health department select board department. So I, it's going to be October 4th. Yes. So it's it's a, a week from yesterday. Yeah, it's on a Sunday. Sunday. Yeah. That's the one in Deerfield or the one yeah. here? The, no, the, it's the one, one in Deerfield. Yeah, that's the one in Deerfield. And it goes 10 to 1, so it doesn't conflict with the Patriots. Yeah. That was a big priority for them <laughs> for some reason. I'm sure it was. It's something that... Ten to one isn't very long, so ten to one. No, all right. Well, I will get in touch. Okay. They're talking like turnaround time of like sixty seconds. They're, they they got this whole thing. They they're like, you like should, we we got this planned out. It's gonna be a fine tuned machine. Um, and that said, you do need to fill out forms yes. in order for it to happen quickly. Yes. So there are forms available in the town office. Um, that you can pick up. So and, they're for uh, yeah, they're just they're they're around and they're linked on the website. So okay, next meeting. Yeah. Two weeks, October thirteenth. Yeah. Back here. And, and oh. please note that that is a Tuesday. That yeah. is not oh, a Monday. You're right. You're right. Oh. Tuesday. That's good to know. Yes, we changed the name of that holiday on the school calendar as well. No longer. Oh, Christmas is that? Day. That is correct. That is Indigenous Peoples Day. It is. Oh, okay, that's actually I'm, I'm going out to Ithaca to visit Hazel. Okay. And the thing is that two years ago I wanted to do that, and they, I got yeah, boy that ruffled so many feathers. I was the only one that voted yes to my motion. So I move we and adjourn. And a year later it happens. Second. It just happens without me saying anything. Yes. Aye. Right. Okay. We we're adjourned.